Let's get into practice question number four. So here's our vignette. A 47-year-old black female with no past medical history presents to the ED accompanied by her husband. Her husband explains that the patient has been, quote, acting differently lately. The patient additionally complains of difficulty feeling her phone when it's ringing. Hmm. A peripheral smear is obtained and pictured in the below image. And you can see that picture at the bottom of the slide. Laboratory results are remarkable for the following. There is a hemoglobin level that's measured to be 7.1, and there is a mean corpuscular volume measured to be 100.8. Which of the following is the best test to confirm the diagnosis? A. Homocysteine B. Methylmalonic acid C. Anti-intrinsic factor antibodies D. Vitamin B12 level also known as cobalamin level, or E, vitamin B9 level, also known as folate level. So I want you to pause the video if you'd like more time to think about this and rewind a little bit if you want to see the image that I gave you. Again, here's the image of the peripheral smear that was obtained. So to summarize quickly, 47-year-old female acting differently, complaining of difficulty feeling her phone when it's ringing. Peripheral smear shows the picture you see here. Hemoglobin is 7.1 mean corpuscular volume 100.8. And the question is asking you which of the following is the best test to confirm the diagnosis. So if you'd like more time to think about this before I start to explain it, then pause the video right now. But let's go ahead and break this down. So the correct answer here is B, methylmalonic acid. And the reason that this is the correct answer is because the disease that we're dealing with or the problem that we're dealing with is a vitamin B12 deficiency. So before I show you why A, C, D, and E are incorrect, I think that the, the proper place to begin the discussion of this high yield concept is to talk about the differences between a B9 and a B12 deficiency. So what you're going to notice is that in both a B9 and a B12 deficiency, there are a lot of shared common features. The first few are that they're both going to have an anemia and it's going to be a macrocytic megaloblastic anemia. And specifically, the mean corpuscular volume or your MCV will be greater than 100. In both cases, in B9 and B12 deficiencies, you'll see hypersegmented neutrophils on a peripheral smear. And in both cases, you'll have an elevated homocysteine level. Where you're going to differentiate between a B9 and a B12 deficiency is the red versus blue text. So in a B12 deficiency, you have an increased level of MMA. But in a B9 deficiency, that MMA is not increased. Additionally, a B12 deficiency will have the presence of neurological symptoms, whereas a B9 deficiency will not. And if we refer back to our question, in this question, the patient has been acting differently, so we're seeing some neuropsychiatric changes, and she's also having trouble feeling her phone when it's ringing, which is to say that she cannot feel vibration. These are very classic symptoms associated with B12 deficiency. In fact, they are termed subacute combined degeneration, because B12 is involved in the synthesis of the myelin that is necessary to put on those nerves to provide normal neuropsychiatric functioning. So in a B12 deficiency, you lose the ability to adequately myelinate those nerves and therefore you get subacute combined degeneration. So basically in a nutshell, if you're gonna take one thing away from this slide, it's that in a B12 deficiency, you see neurosymptoms and you have an elevated MMA. So the correct answer in this question was elevated MMA. And now let's talk about why everything else is incorrect. So A, homocysteine, is incorrect because, again, it's going to be elevated in both your B12 and your B9 deficiency. So by choosing this answer, you're not going to be able to differentiate between the two. Anti-intrinsic factor antibodies are antibodies that are formed in somebody who has pernicious anemia. And while this can certainly be a cause of a B12 deficiency, it's not necessarily the cause. So it's not the best test to confirm a diagnosis because just by reading this question, you don't know that this is a pernicious anemia. If instead there was a question where they were listing different antibodies and only anti-intrinsic factor antibodies could give you a B12 deficiency, well then yeah, in that case it would be the correct answer. But in this question, it's not the best test to confirm a diagnosis of a B12 deficiency because you don't necessarily know that that's what's causing this patient's B12 deficiency. 
Let's talk about E, and I'm going to skip D intentionally, and we'll come back to that at the end. But the reason that E, vitamin B9, is incorrect is because, again, there's no neurological symptoms. So we know that this cannot be a folate deficiency. It absolutely cannot be a folate deficiency. Now, what about choice D, vitamin B12 level? I know that a lot of you probably jumped and picked that answer because you knew in your head that I gave you a vignette with neurological symptoms, you saw the anemia, you saw the elevated MCV, and you're thinking to yourself, hmm, I got him. Dirty's trying to get me here, but it's a B12 level. The reason that this is incorrect is because a B12 level can be normal in a B12 deficiency. And this is the point of this high yield question and the reason that I wrote an entire question dedicated to a B12 deficiency. Somebody who has a low actual level of B12, when you do their labs, it might show you that they have a normal level of B12. And that's a really, really high yield fact that medical students often overlook and they don't study. On your exam, if you have somebody with the clinical features of a vitamin B12 deficiency, you do not get a vitamin B12 level because the level can be misleading and it might actually be normal. The way that you confirm this is by looking at the MMA and the homocysteine. And when you put that in combination with the other features that are in the clinical vignette, you see the hypersegmented neutrophils, it's going to seal the diagnosis. So the high yield bottom line, the takeaway from this question, and the reason that I wrote this is that on USMLE or Comlex, first, a macrocytic megaloblastic anemia is always either going to be a B12 or a B9 deficiency. B9 and B12 both have elevated homocysteine levels, but only B12 deficiencies have elevated MMAs. This third point is the only reason I wrote this question. A B12 level can be normal despite a true deficiency. So if they ask you what the best test is or what you should do next or how you confirm the diagnosis, you do not pick vitamin B12 level. You pick the MMA. And then our last point, falsely normal B12 levels may be present in patients with liver disease, myeloproliferative disease, or kidney disease. So be on the lookout, especially in a question like this. If they give you a past medical history of one of these three things, then they're really trying to push you in the direction to not get that vitamin B12 level. Instead, get the methylmalonic acid. So high yield bottom line, vitamin B12 levels can be normal even if a patient really does have a vitamin B12 deficiency.